Red Sea, crossing the wilderness, crossing the Jordan River. The people of Israel, these freed people of Israel, have been making these various crossings, each with an element of danger. The people had to cross the sea before Pharaoh's army chased them down. The people had to wander the wilderness for a generation for the time that it would take those unworthy of entering the promised land to die as if bad habits and misguided behavior would not follow the people across a river. It was a time of year that the river was considered unfordable. The Jordan was at flood stage. Have you ever seen a river overflow its banks? It might seem harmless enough at first, but eventually you see something that makes you respect the raw power of nature. On one of the annual scout canoe trips we used to take when I was a kid, we witnessed the Muskingum River rise two feet in one hour and eight feet overnight. In the morning, we marveled at how much wider the river was. And of course, the riverbank structures that were now partially or wholly submerged. But the scariest sights were a 50-foot uprooted tree rushing past us like a bathtub toy. <laughs> and the four idiots across the river who thought it would be fun to try to paddle against the current. We watched in disbelief and then dread as they were swept towards the dam they were fortunate to manage to maneuver the canoe back to the rain-swollen bank, far downstream from wherever they had put in. It was a good lesson. There is no way mere human power can overcome a relentless force. Joshua knew there is no way mere human power could overcome a relentless force. God must be present. Indeed, God must be at the forefront. Dramatically, the writer describes how the covenant bearers hoist the ark and proceed to the water's edge. There is no Moses this time, raising his walking stick to command the water to part. No, this time the people must dip their toes in the raging river to wade right in despite any fear of being swept away. They do it because they trust that they are following the word of God. In the first chapter of Joshua, four times in 11 verses, God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous. God promises him with these words, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. How much more of a guarantee could one want? We want demand guarantees, don't we? We expect our cars to last long after they're paid for, no matter how well we've maintained them. We want the 20-year shingles on our house to last 25. We demand our pizza in 30 minutes or less or else it's free guarantee. 
And we wish this whole promised land stuff didn't require so much effort on our part. Despite what's promised by crossing to the other side, we hesitate. We want the comfort of the familiar. We definitely don't want to drown, and we'd prefer that our feet don't get wet. The people of Israel have been promised that they will defeat the inhabitants of their promised land. But first, they must cross the river. Now, one way to translate the word abar, which is to cross, is is another way to pass by. Now, hopefully, our intention is not to conquer and annihilate people, as it was the Israelites' intention. But has there not been a practice of churches passing by entire groups of people, ignoring them, on the way to some personal promised land? The church has justified passing by the groups of people mentioned in our proposed open and affirming belief statement because of mistranslations and misuse of scripture. Churches have bypassed the forgotten and rejected because to remember the forgotten and those society has rejected requires facing bigotry, and racism. It requires making more than just our buildings accessible to all, but our hearts and minds also. Churches have perpetuated stereotypes, sometimes for no better reason than tradition. Because it's easier to carry ashes than it is fire. Some might say the river is unfordable. It's not the right time. There is too much danger of not completing a successful crossing. The Jordan was at its highest and swiftest at harvest time. But the resources the people needed to thrive were on the other side of the river. And they will find the food to nurture them in greatest abundance right now. Before they can attempt the river crossing, Joshua orders the people to perform their purification rituals. It's richly symbolic. The people are marking the end of their wandering by showing God their intention to enter the promised land as a people cleansed of sin. We too will perform a ceremony of our intention to live lives as best we can in the imitation of Jesus Christ by taking communion before we conduct our vote. It is our opportunity to publicly declare in a very public place our belief that Jesus lived, died, and rose again so that we, too, can share in his ministry to all people. We stand on the edge of a raging river of declaring our church a place that is truly open to all people and affirms the right of all people to join our ever-widening circle of love. Will you wade in with us? Will you make that crossing with us? Are you going to dip your toe in a little reluctantly? 
Are you afraid? The earthly promised land is not a perfect land. There are still problems and struggles. There are still disagreements. But God is there. And because God is there, we can be a relentless force of goodness. No problem is too great to solve. No raging river can sweep us away from following God's word. Amen.